Hey guys, this is Mel, and I'm here to talk about Orphan Black. Um, more specifically, my top five favorite moments of season four. Today is September 7th, 2016, and I'm so sorry for the delay. I've been gone for about a month now. The last video I did for Orphan Black was for the San Diego Comic Con um, highlights uh, for season five. So if you haven't checked that video, go check that out now. Um, reason why I'm doing um, Orphan Black now is because, well, this past weekend I went to a convention and I actually dressed up as Cosima. I actually wore these glasses for it, so I figured why not wear it uh, for this video. A uh, photo right now probably shows you um, me dressed up as Cosima up on screen, so there's that. I also even found a booth that did henna tattoos and got the um, the Cosima tattoo done for um, the day, and I'm pretty excited on the fact that it's still on me. I never did henna tattoos before. I know they last a while. I just never expected how long they would last. So I'm pretty um, excited that it's still on me. A lasting reminder for a few more uh, for a few more weeks. So I'm very glad for that. I even went all out and got one done for Supernatural right here. You can't really see it on my inside of my arm. So I figured why not. Uh, so uh, there is that. I had a fantastic day at the convention with a friend of mine. Um, so, um, yeah, thought I'd share that, um, now, and so let's get right to it. We're going to do 10 minute clock, um, for this video. Sorry for the way that my video of you seeing me right now looks. I'm trying to do it a different way with a different setup. It's still on my tablet, but we'll see how it goes. But yeah, so if I'm looking off to the sides, because the screen for my list is on one side, camera's on the other side. So 10 minute clock, let's begin. Um, so my fifth favorite moment of season four has to be episode four, so episode four, not four, six, 406 titled The Scandal of Altruism, um, and episode seven, so 407 titled The Anti-Socialism of Sex. The reason why these two episodes is because in 406 we got the shocking ending of Kendall Malone's death by Detective Duco, and 407 is tacked to it because 407 basically shows the fallout of that, um, that death and um with 407 we see sarah's downward spiral which pretty much follows along the same lines as beth um we even see um sarah hallucinating about beth and contemplating how this must have been what beth felt like moments were along the last leg of her life before she um committed suicide we also see kasima taking very dangerous risk when she believes there is no hope now that um, Kendall Malone is dead, aka the originator of both clone lines, Lita and Castor. So we see her really truly taking her own risk. Also, because of the fact that she got confirmation, the fact that Delphine is truly gone, not even aware of what Felix found out, which is another reason why I like this episode, is because we see Felix truly coming to the rescue for both Sarah and Kinsima. Um Sarah, he's literally finds her before she even thinks about following Beth's footsteps. And with Kasima, he actually tells her that Crystal shared the fact that Kasima was taken away while still alive after she was shot. When uh, the previous six episodes, we had no idea what happened to Kasima. So that's what I really liked about um, these two episodes put together, and it's why it's in my number five spot. Now, number four. Um, really goes another two episodes, and it is episode 404, titled From Instinct to Rational Control, and episode 405, human raw material why the both of them are together is because of the undercover work that was happening um in both these episodes in episode 404 we get donnie and felix um going undercover undercover as a couple at the fertility clinic it was just fantastic to see these two characters working together and just playing off of each other and really really see how felix explains to donnie just what it means to be uh, in a uh, in a relationship um, that they were trying to portray because it was obvious that Donnie was overcompensating for certain things, and then 405 was great because we saw Donnie, Kasima, and Crystal all going undercover in the bright board orientation that was going on. Donnie and Kasima were obviously going undercover. Donnie as his original character from what he was undercover with Felix, and then Kasima as the surrogate um, for them um, that was gonna be brought in and then crystal was just being uh just going in as a potential um client who was looking to um get um become a surrogate not even realizing that she was jeopardizing donnie and Kasima's undercover operation as well it was so funny also when Casima kept being constantly mistaken as Casima when there's 
such visible difference between them. One's blonde hair, one's uh, brunette, one has braids, one has like f flowing waves in her hair, one is all glammed up, one is all um, very dressed down to the point not draw attention to herself. One's pretty much in dark colors, one's in light colors for clothing, so it's very distinct differences between and yet they constantly kept being mistaken as each other. Or in this case, Crystal kept being mistaken as Kasim and being treated as such. So I thought that was pretty funny um, throughout the whole thing. So moment number three, though. Um, it's one episode. One episode for number three. And that is episode 409, and that is the mitigation of competition. And really, this episode was number three for me because of Rachel exposing Evie Cho to the public about the Brightborn um, illegal experiments going on. The way Rachel did it was truly fantastic. I truly did not know where Rachel stood. Sorry for the fan in the background. I, anyways, I truly did not know where Rachel stood. I didn't know if she was on Sarah's team. I didn't know if she was double-crossing them for her own better interests. But the way she did it with Evie Cho, she made it seem like she was double-crossing them when really she was recording them, recording her to get the truth and then expose it to the media, um, thanks to Ira. So I thought that was truly fantastic. I loved how that was handled. It was like, yes, it's like on the one hand, you really do not want to be in Evie Cho's shoes when she's caught red-handed in front of the whole um, press conference. But then on the other hand, you're like, it's about damn time that she got exposed for all her uh, dirty science that she was doing. So it was really fantastic to have that happen. Also, it's just funny to see the two sibling team-ups. You got Sarah and Felix against Rachel and Ira. You got complete contrast between you got Sarah and Felix who are all punked, dark clothing, n no, not even caring for the rules type of attitude. They really don't care. Um, um, attitude. And then you got Rachel and Ira. Prim, proper, lighter colors, all back straight, proper, composed, must follow the rules type thing. You got very two contrasting sets of siblings trying to work together even when they enter a room like that pair you uh, immediately see like that divide between the two it's pretty funny and i really like that even in the promo when you even get a glimpse of that it's like oh that's not gonna go well for them at all but it was just funny to see how um felix tried to handle the situation without it getting into a cat fight between the two clones so that was pretty awesome so um moment number two moving on uh has to be uh the finale 410 um uh, title from Dancing Mice to Psychopaths. The uh, reason why this was number two was because, one, the clone impersonations. I love my clone impersonations, and the fact that in this episode, I was not even aware that there was one happening until she pretty much took the proverbial wig off her head, and that was Sarah pretending to be Crystal. So originally, they had released a scene for the episode where Crystal was um, interrupting this interview mob on Dr. Um, on Dr. Ian, I believe. And um, she just comes in and brings up all these questions, uh, posing as an MTV reporter, I believe, and really asking all the questions that got reporters, asking them again. I completely thought that it was Crystal. Completely thought it was Crystal. Only to find out later on when I actually watched the episode, it was actually Sarah impersonating her. That was like, point, fantastic, well done. I truly did not see that coming i love it when those happen every time those clone impersonate it truly not only shows how very talented tatiana Maslany is but also shows just how well you have to pay attention to the little minute mannerism changes to distinguish the fact that that isn't the original clone it's a clone pretending to be that clone type thing if you get what i mean so i thought that was pretty fantastic so Yay, really like that for that reason. Also, another reason was because Crystal was finally brought into Clone Club. She actually got to meet Sarah, um, thanks to Felix and um, Art. But the funny thing was, she does not believe in Clone Club. She thinks that her conspiracy theory about the cosmetic scandal or whatever is the truth. She doesn't believe that there's that they are clones. She actually believes that Sarah looks nothing like her. She rates herself a 10 while she gives Sarah a 7 at best. So I thought that was pretty hilarious. And Sarah's just looking at what the hell are you seeing right now? How do we not look alike? So that's pretty funny. I cannot wait until Crystal meets Tony and just what she thinks from that because that's just, that's going to be funny. 
Um, also, in this episode, we finally got answers about Delphi. We got to figure out what actually happened um, in her in the previous finale when she got shot. And then uh, we got to see what happened with that where she's kind of been. And then we actually got to see her in the present day and get her reunion with Cosima. So that was pretty good. Even though, she again, she's reuniting with Cosima when she's pretty much on her deathbed again. So um, it was great that we got to finally see her again. Honorable mentions very quickly. Timer's going to go out soon. But one honorable mention is episode 402 titled The Transgressive Border Crossing. Uh, pretty much that is um, honorable mention because it shows... Beth's last moments with MK before she decides to kill herself in the pilot episode. It's great to just see that come full circle and just see where exactly she ended in her mind space to get her to that point on the train station. So um, it was great to see that. Although it was very emotional, it definitely it got they got the response that it needed to get. So there's that. Second moment has to be 408, the redesign of natural objects. This episode is an honorable mention because of the fact that Johnny was in, Donnie was in jail. Sorry, and it was just funny to see him in that situation, see how he handles it, and also it was just great to see Allison turning to Sarah for help and deceiving De- Detective Duco. I truly thought that at some point that Allison was going to betray Sarah to save Donnie, which is understandable. She's going to save her husband at, at the very least, but the you kind of don't want her to, to portray Clone Club, if that makes sense. So it was great to see that she ultimately turned to Sarah and made it look like she deceived the Clone Club to help her husband. So I really like that as well. Last favorite me- honorable mention was 403, titled The Stigmata of Progress, which is mainly because of the whole um, uh, trouble that Allison and Donnie got trying to dig up Dr. Leakey's body just to get the little implant that it was that he was in his cheek. I thought that was pretty f- funny. There's a timer. Although it was very grotesque how it happened. It was just their reactions to doing the deed and digging him up was pretty funny. So there's that. Now, on to with the timer done, though. I only have to reveal my favorite moment of season four is the premiere episode. And episode 401 titled The Collapse of Nature. And this is mainly because it was solely flashbacks of Beth. Instead of Sarah being the main character we follow um throughout the episode which is usually the case we usually side with sarah this time our focus is on beth we so because of that i guess you can kind of say it was a prequel to the pilot episode uh to or to the series in general it was a prequel because we've got to follow beth we got to see where she was in the whole um clone conspiracy how she was handling it who she was going with we got to see her relationship with allison and Kasima and how she was kind of the mediator between the two and also we got to see her relationship with MK who were truly in the grid of it all it seemed that Beth was um sheltering Kasima and Allison with the whole clone conspiracy thing so it was only MK she could truly go to but even then she thought that was overwhelming in itself and that's what kind of led her to her downfall but also with that with the fact that we got to see Beth um side to things we got to see many familiar faces from season one we got to see paul again who died in season three we got to see dr leaky again who died in season two i believe and we got to see i believe olivier we got to see um evie cho even though we don't know who evie cho was until the present day in season four but we got to see all these um familiar faces from previous seasons in these flashbacks and i thought just that was pretty um Fantastic. We got to see Detective DeAngelis, I believe, the one who's always, um, who's out to get Sarah when she was pretending to be Beth in season one. Uh, we got to see Felix before he knew about Clone Club. There's like this brief moment in the police station where they could have met Beth and Felix, but they just, the paths didn't cross, although they kind of did, but they never even realized it. So that was pretty, this was pretty cool, uh, to see all that happening. And we finally got to see, meet MK through her relationship with Beth. So that was pretty um, awesome to see. And I just really liked it. I wasn't expecting that um, as the first episode in the season. And then it was pretty cool how we got um, a few flashbacks of Beth here and there and got really into the backstory of how she was the one who started to really look at the clone conspiracy. Now it's Sarah and the others that it's finishing what Beth couldn't finish. So I thought that was really fantastic to see. And I really liked it um so that's about it so next i will be back to talk about season five although that won't be back until april but season five is the last season for orphan black they confirmed it at um comic-con um last month or two months ago so there's that um 
but yeah so uh thank you guys for tuning in truly appreciate it um hope you come back um in spring 2017 to see what i have to say about the final season of orphan black but until then guys uh don't forget to like this video subscribe to my channel check out my other videos if you haven't done so already um also don't forget to uh, um subscribe to here as well as to my tumblr page the link for that will be down below everything's all linked up again so it should be good to go but um i'll do a video about that explaining the whole issue i had with that later maybe but um Go subscribe me there. I usually um, reblog a lot of stuff that has to do with the TV shows. I got a little behind with it um, last spring just because of work. But I'm hoping to find a new way to keep up with everything. So like me there. Reblog, follow me there, whatever, if you want to keep up to date with what I have to post. Or repost, I should say. Or reblog is what I should say. I shouldn't say repost. Repost is a bad thing. Um, so reblog. And um, is that about it? Yeah, that's about it. So, thank you guys again for tuning in. I hope you guys come back to see what I have to say. And just check out my other videos if there's something else that I talk about that you like. So, until then, guys, this is Mel. Wishing you all a great day, a great week, wherever you are. Hope you're enjoying the rest of the end of summer. And also, if you like, just comment if you like these. Because I definitely do. Um, so, there's that. So, until then. Bye, guys.